Dear audience, welcome to the show Power Chat. In today's episode, we will be discussing on the overall human rights situation of Nepal with particular focus on the rights of women. Joining us today is Ms. Mohana Anshari, Commissioner and Spokesperson at the National Human Rights Commission. Please allow me to welcome her. Welcome to the show, uh, Ms. Thank Anshari. You. How have you been? I'm good. Would you highlight on the overall human rights situation of Nepal with reference to National Human Rights Commission's uh, monitoring and record? Thank you very much for uh, offering me this interview and particularly for Human Rights Commission to explain about human rights situation in Nepal. Um, in regard of uh, overall human rights situation, we are looking after actually uh, the scenario always uh, govern on the political and civil right, which is uh, still incomplete, not uh, truly because uh, people are still looking something like a uh, state protection, state support. Uh, and then uh, we are looking like a human rights commission is uh, during the conflict era human rights commission's focus is on civil and political right but uh, later on after the new commission appointment like uh, we say mm, 2014 we appointed and our new board come out and our new board decided uh, well um, Still, we are passing the uh, transitional phase is not uh, completed because the at that time constitution interim constitution is a country run by interim constitution, and then uh, the scenario is become like uh, people are looking development, uh, people are looking um, social and economical cultural right. Uh, and also the people uh, are looking conflict era cases you mean not that being done. You mean that uh, uh, despite uh, mandate remaining the same, uh, the working modalities or the activities of uh, the monitoring activities or protection works of National Human Rights Commissions are changed? No, the mandate is same. The mandate is same and now the mandate uh, got a uh, little broader because uh, if you go to the 2015 constitution there were lots of rights are uh, incorporated like uh, people's uh, people's are like uh, for example lgbt right i'm just uh, giving one example uh, their right had been included in the 2015 constitution but whenever you go to the return in the society they are not uh, the right is not fulfilling so the 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 matter is ch the challenge is that like people's aspiration somehow incorporated in the constitution, but in regard the constitution that people are receiving the same uh, facility, same state uh, protection. So these these are like uh, interconnecting. People's aspiration has become a high, which is a state need to be fulfilled, but it's not fulfilling so the human rights situation we are uh, we are saying in in country is a uh, not only one corner like uh, dealing the conflict era cases only people are looking the development people are looking the facilities which is very much close to the human right basic service people are now looking the basic service which is not fulfilling what do you see the problem with uh, the delivery side or uh, the recipient side. Uh, do you see uh, problems with the state uh, agencies, state mechanisms or with uh, the general awareness of the people uh, understanding the diversity of human rights as you were referring to the case of LGBTI? No, it's like uh, actually uh, uh, the now we can say the Nepali people are little aware about the right, not fully. So the awareness level is like a high and the de delivery side, the state side is the same infrastructure, same human resources and then small scale, still we can say the small scale and things are like a centralized. For example, if I say one thing, uh, like a look at the VDC secretary, for example, where they live, 
they live in a headquarter and people go to the seek a service at the local level. So now we don't have a conflict situation. The situation is normalized. You mean this is stops uh, access to the general people? Yes. The, my, my concern is like people are seeking the state close uh, connection. They are looking the state facilities, but the facilities where it is in a headquarter, like in a capitals. So majority people are living in the village. Well, I will come back to you on the state capacities. Uh, would you highlight on uh, the National Human Rights Commission's work sure. protecting human rights in general and uh, the rights of women and other marginalized communities in particular? Thank you. This is a very important question and the, uh, the Commission's mandate also work on that. The Commission mandate is the belief in the protection of the human right and uh, uh, promotion on the human rights issues is no matter who is uh, like uh, seeking support from the Human Rights Commission. Human Rights Commission believe on the voiceless voice. We speak about the marginalized community's voice. We speak about the isolated people's voice. We speak about the underprivileged and underdeveloped uh, areas like for example Karnali. For example, like if we see the uh, mm, people are suffering from the food scarcity in the Karnali region. So we, we, our focus is that kind of. Uh, so we believe on the monitoring uh, and uh, whatever we speak is uh, based on monitoring and uh, it's uh, truly based on the fact actually. We are not uh, giving, we give our ideas, we give our voice, but uh, we speak on the fact basically basic our our tools is uh, believe on the fact so whenever we do our monitoring it's based on the um, our um, mandate we we are authorized to any time we can go for the monitoring government offices facilities and services so if the government is not providing the equal uh, service or equal facilities we uh, speaks them and what is the response from the state agencies or government institutions while uh, you visit uh, in the field or you monitor with uh, the NHRC's uh, presence at the field? There is a true comment from our side, the uh, Human Rights Commission side. They're, they, they are very good. They listen us. But when the question is uh, implementation, they are very poor on the implementation part. Uh, if you go to the, our all those uh, work and then recommendation, it's like uh, the government fulfill on very like a uh, very low part we can say like uh, if we in a in a one year if we recommended 100 cases they fulfill like a 60 or 14 sometime so this this is a uh, depend on uh, the which kind of recommendation we are ma making sometime we make uh, we we recommend the government like uh, uh, well uh, the law is insufficient for example, like a torture law, which is a uh, since long time is uh, not passed. It uh, it tabulated in the parliament. Uh, it discussed uh, widely, but uh, still they are not uh, willing to pass. Which is the government uh, already shown so many interests that they will fulfill. If, um, if you look into the government's commitments uh, uh, to international community, especially with reference to the ratification of several international treaties, you referring to Convention Against Torture. What is NHRC's assessment on the implementation of government's commitment to international community by ratifying or being signatory to international treaties? Yeah. That that is actually uh, our our role also the the Human Rights Commission's uh, role and then mandate also we look after the um, international treaties how much it's fulfilling and how many uh, treaties are implementing on the domestic laws or reflecting on the domestic laws so the Torture Act is a very much very much important and it also relate with the Universal Periodic Review. Because the there is a comment, uh, there is a one comment, uh, several comment on the UPR by the committee said like uh, m uh, maintain the facilities uh, in the detention center, for example, one, and uh, uh, place the torture act 
but our constitution like 2015 constitution said torture is the prohibited under this constitution but whenever you look the law how can people claim the law need there is a one law in a, in we, can, we have our regular law like mulki and there is a one clause but it's not fulfilling and the victims so, are uh, that of uh, women and other marginalized yes, groups yes yes sure sure and then nhrc do the monitoring like a detention center nhrc do the monitoring in detention center nhrc do the monitoring in a jail but if you go to the see the facilities that people are receiving like a, these are uh, in a, in a one one case they are like a, they are involved in the crime and their their case has been proved by the court but when you see the facilities provided by the state in a jail it's a very poor very poor quality very poor facilities like uh, health services are not uh, uh, adequate in the jails in a detention center there is a there is still illegal detentions by like uh, for example there is center case in the jor party uh, we we have seen the about the about the police uh, the the police uh, whole police uh, officer are burned by the civilians because the, you know the p behave of the security personnel also have to be human right friendly which is not uh, happening in several areas if you go to the t some some torture cases in the terai the also there is a some torture cases it is happening every day and the cases uh, that of the violence against women how do you work to address the uh, to minimize the effect of uh, you know uh, domestic violence or combat with such cases um, we have like a human rights commission and state also have a provided like a, um, under under the international obligation and then under the national obligation actually state also have a committed with the people of like a women half of the population is state committed like a, we are not going to behave a, a discriminatory practice which is a um, quoted in the constitution and it's a prohibited under the constitution and the uh, human rights commission have uh, their um, one of the focal decks we have we have uh, like uh, uh, five regional offices and uh, uh, three sub regional offices so these all offices have a uh, focal officers uh, to deal with the violence against women issues we have a seed of focal person in our office we have a focal person called like uh, anti trafficking unit what is the situation miss i'm sorry uh, i'm coming situation on. i'm coming on i'm coming on like uh, the situation in Nepal on the violence against women is actually uh, not very good. Like a women's situation is not very good. Violence against women is uh, every day like uh, coming up. But it's, it's uh, not uh, only today. It's uh, since a long time ago. The women are treated very badly in the since society. Since a long time and with, uh, you know, for last two and a half decades yes if you see the growth of media and civil society engagement around there are a lot of cases being reported for example uh, the practice on witchcraft known yeah, as I bokshi can, i can, I can say know. i can, I there, can there are several references yes. media has been reporting for long human rights activists and campaigners nhrc and other uh, national instruments working to combat these uh, you know malpractices this violence against the women but why Th there is increasing trend on such issues. No, it's like what is your it's assessment? It's not an increasing trend. I can say the violence against women is not a one day effort. And if we say gender based violence is not a one day effort, it's like women are victimized, or male are victimized, or third gender are victimized, or disabled people are victimized, or elderly citizens are victimized. This is a, since a long time ago. It's an ongoing process and people are slowly aware and they are started reporting and media are so conscious and media also reporting. But if you look at the facilities, I'm talking about the look at the facilities. Like uh, if, if we are going to little back 2010, the government declared the human uh, violence, uh, gender-based violence action plan and the year called uh, to eliminate uh, gender-based violence from Nepal and it's a loss of effort ongoing but if you look uh, the local level support is very weak we can say 
So talking at the national level, one thing, and turning into the local level is a different thing. Is it due to the absence of state agencies and the judicial bodies like NHRC or other instruments? No, I'm saying this or is the or attitude or problem. Or just, the beca no, just because of the lack of awareness? No, As I'm saying this is the attitude of the problem. Government office exists in the local level also. But uh, whenever the women go to seek a service, they said like, no, this is your family problem, deal it. And people can't imagine who is responding, this is your family problem, but I'm saying this is not a family problem, this is going to turn into the crime. So in the first uh, information, when the women seeking from the state uh, missionaries, like for example the police, when the women go to reporting the case on, on the police, why police? not responding well so this is the train in existing train that's what i was asking to you that uh, the absence of state agencies unwillingness to address the cases concerning violence against women uh, actually the human right commission is uh, very much open to deal with this issue also because it's a, it is a part of the our mandate if we are talking about the human right, we have to include the women as well, the women issue inside. And Human Rights Commission is uh, very much, because uh, we have a lot of reported cases, like uh, uh, women file a case in a court, easily they are not getting access to justice, like uh, women uh, don't have uh, money to pay the lawyer's fees. So we have uh, like a Human Rights Commission uh, telling the uh, state agencies to provide the access to justice to the victim. How do you assess uh, the legal aid program uh, initiated by different organizations here in Nepal along with NHRC? Are they sufficient? No, it's a, like legal aid program is not enough and not sufficient because some of the legal aid program is run in, in the Kashmandu, some of the legal aid program is running in the capitals. But the, what about the grassroots women's access? There is still a large number of uh, need at the local level. For example, sometimes the NGOs run the legal aid program in, in like a uh, uh, very limited area. So my, my, my request, because I heard and I was involved in the government like uh, law, law, law ministry. It's a long time ago they have drafted the legal aid uh, plan and then policies. To, to uh, There is a special package from the UN agencies also to access to justice on the providing by the legal aid. So that, that program is still not reaching to the women. So that is another important thing. And uh, if you are talking about the violence against women, there is a one fund, it's called the GBV fund, and which is a local level fund created for the victim. And that fund actually is not reach out to the victim. That is a big hurdle in that. Still government officials are the looking, the victim need to be provide the valid document. Can you imagine how can victim can provide the valid document? That government need to be protect well way to the victim. So there is a big, uh, big gap also, a big gap on the understanding of the uh, who is working on that modality. So the Ministry of Women and Children Affairs have to provide clear guidelines to the, their local authorities. What is your assessment on the work carried out by different non-governmental organizations? There are thousands of organizations registered with the Social Welfare Council, affiliated with SWC and registered at different you know, government authorities. Yeah, tentatively 4,045. 40, it's yeah, around yeah, 40,000 40, NGOs. 40,000 organizations you know, working and on this. Uh, yeah. Many of them uh, seem to be raising voices against such violence cases. So, uh, are you satisfied with their performance? Yes, yeah, sometimes, you know, the civil society work is uh, like a question mark. Sometimes they have done uh, very good work. So, this is uh, like a kind of, uh, their role have to be clarified and they are here to facilitate or support to the government, not create another parallel system. So anyhow, uh, the civil society organization here to support on the sustainable development. Here, civil society organization to provide the access to justice for the 
to all if they they have if if i i i see their their mandate and their word but uh, uh, some of the civil society due to the some of the civil society organizations work which is not transparent there is a question mark like for example in the earthquake relief and reparation or support some of them are like a committed we are going to construct the house this 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 much but which is not a, and many cases are reported on the on the media and we also call to the government and the civil society organization what is going on this some of the organization ca- telling like uh, we are launching the campaign and chaupuri against the chaupuri some of the organization saying like uh, we are launching the campaign against the, the dowry witchcraft so and so but whenever we go to the local level nothing else nothing happening so that is the like you know their transparency also sometimes the questions sometimes these issues are projected uh, the other way if 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 you monitor at the field uh, things are not happening uh, the way media or civil society organization project it what is your assessment on the performance of media as well no i am i am i am raising a question on the government actually we have a home ministry and we have a local authority like called cdo district chief administrator and their role is to monitor we have a district development committee their role have to be monitored those organization before giving them approval that project has been done so lack of the monitoring also uh, like creating some vacuum and we have a, a social welfare council like we have a all systematic organization which is they are not fulfilling their not sometimes so if uh, if uh, we have a lot of problem in in uh, in our society and sometimes it created some some rumor also but uh, if i uh, if i go to the 75 district situation if we are talking about the several uh, facilities like a uh, lack of legal knowledge also people are victimizing lack of legal knowledge well miss ansari uh, we are coming to the end of the show what can be done uh, to stop or at least lessen the case uh, incidents of violence against women uh, so that uh, they are in the real sense empowered and they see their effective role in all state mechanisms or state uh, agencies the social mindset need to be changed social mindset have to be changed like talking country about the developing to develop nepal is moving to the developing to the develop so social mindset have to be changed like uh, treating a women badly treating a children at badly um, uh, mobilizing t- children in the labor work so this have to be changed one thing and then second things very well uh, organized protection mechanism needed in nepal like uh, for example human right commission maybe uh, uh, we we are working on the very limited resources but i think sometime i'm happy and saying like a human human right commission is uh, doing right things and then second uh, third thing says like a uh, government respond have to be very quick and rapid if somewhere else uh, like uh, in in any villages people are saying like uh, we are we are suffering for the health problem government have to respond we are suffering by the food scarcity government have to re- respond and they have uh, everything like government have uh, everything they can airlift the food they can airlift the facilities but uh, when the respond is a uh, weak uh, people are dying so it's like a uh, problem is here and uh, another we have uh, some bad laws also which need to be uh, soon as soon need to be reformed as we are saying we have a uh, like a good uh, constitution if we are we have a good constitution one one and a half year already passed and remaining one and a half year we need a law to implement those constitution i mean to implement constitution well, sanchari thank you very much for your time it was a pleasure talking to you thank you very much dear audience time now to wrap up the show Keep watching us. See you next week. Namaste.